nice to be here. It's nice to be back. I'm 41 years old and I've never been healthier and I've never been healthier or happier in my entire life. 41 years old, happier and healthier than I've ever been. And I owe it all to one thing. I'm not here to preach tonight, ladies and gentlemen, but if you want to listen, here's what I'm going to tell you. I owe it all to one thing, my happiness, the gym. I know, I never thought I would say that to a room full of people, but I'm happier than I've ever been and it's all because of the gym. I have stopped going to the gym. <laughs> the gym ruined my body forever. Before the gym, my body looked like this. At the gym, it looked like this, but better. And after the gym, it's gone back to this. All it is apart from one part of my body. I'm about to show you my secret shame, ladies and gentlemen. Maybe not everybody will be able to see it, but on the screens, hopefully you'll be able to. Before the gym, that's what my arm looked like. It's not great, but it's in proportion with the rest of my body. At the gym, it got better. And after the gym, it just went back to this, as did the rest of the part of my body, except for one part that does not know the gym experiment is over. <laughs> Check this shit out. What? It's double the size? It won't go back down? <laughs> that has ruined my life. I, I'm walking down the street looking like Popeye. <laughs> I'm leaning so far to the right, even Donald Trump's like, what are you doing over there? <laughs> And here's the thing, I'm a white man, so I've never been racially profiled, but I've got a glimpse into what that might be like. Because you, if you are a 41-year-old man who has one disproportionately large bicep, <laughs> there are certain assumptions <laughs> that people make about your hobbies. <laughs> Old ladies hiss at me in the street. They see it, they're like, stop it, you'll go blind. <laughs> Uh, I will finish up with this. I was in a place called uh, Fairbanks, Alaska last year. Oh, yay. Uh, you know it? It's brilliant. It's the middle of nowhere, but then I drove to a log cabin to do a show in the middle of nowhere. In, like, in the middle of nowhere. It was this log cabin bar. There was 80 people at the gig. They were all old men with beards down to here who looked after the nuclear weapons, and they all just brought their guns to the gig. They just had their guns next to them at the gig. Oh, my God, I have never tried harder. <laughs> But after the show, I met the most amazing woman. She was an end-of-the-world survivalist. For the last two years, she had been rowing a canoe down this river to this spot where she had built this entire place that was off the grid by hand. No one in the world had ever seen it. In fact, to hide it, every weekend she would have to paddle three hours back up against the stream. No one knew where it was. I was like, no one? She says, no one has ever seen it. She said, well, I'm going to offer you something tonight. Would you like to be the only person in the world to know where my cabin is. I've always wanted to show someone, but it has to be someone who won't come back and attack me, so would you like to come and see it? That is the most intimate thing anyone has ever offered me in my life. Would you like to be the keeper of my greatest secret? So this is what I said. No. <laughs> no, 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 because here's what I've learned from every movie that has ever been made. Nothing good has ever happened in an isolated cabin in the woods. <laughs> there has never, never once been a movie where they're like, oh, thank God we finally made it to this isolated cabin in the woods. Oh, your cell phone doesn't have reception? No, that's a really good sign. Let's just sit by this fire and read with this weird book with human skin on it for no reason. <laughs> But if I had not gone to that place, I would not have heard the greatest sentence another human being has ever uttered to my face because this, without a word of a lie, ladies and gentlemen, is what she said. She said, it's a pity you're leaving here tonight. And I said, why? And she said this, because I've killed a bear. Can you imagine how good I f She said it was like it was sexy. It was not sexy. My penis went inside me. Uh, you guys have been absolutely brilliant. Thank you so much.